This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. You guys asked for it, you're going to get it. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. This is the new Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro. Threes in both names, both can operate as tablets, laptops, more or less, each of them. We're going to compare them now. You know those intelligence tests where it says, which of these things are or are not alike? Well, these both are alike and not alike at the same time. They both run Windows 8.1. They're both some of the coolest Windows 8.1 convertibles running full-blown Windows 64-bit that you can get. They both can act as laptops and tablets, but here's where the difference comes in. This is the Surface Pro 3. Primarily a tablet first by design. Keyboard sold separately literally does separate right there. It's got a magnetic connector on there. The keyboard is going to set you back about $130 for the type cover, which is the one that has the movie clicky keys like this. It has a neat two-part magnet right there, so it improves the angle. You know, you can watch our review of this to get all the information up, but you see what I mean. And that makes it more bearable as a laptop than ever before. So it's not just a tablet anymore. In fact, though this keyboard might be small at 12.1 inches, it's actually pretty usable. However, it doesn't exactly compete with the Yoga 13 inch keyboard experience right here because Lenovo does a great job with keyboards. And there's our keyboard because of the design. It's always there. It's on the bottom. But it's bigger. It's roomier. It feels more like a real keyboard. Both of these have backlit keys. Uh, this is not my favorite Lenovo keyboard because this thing is so crazy thin that, you know, you can't have that much key travel there, but it's still, it's pretty darn good. More of a normal laptop experience. The Yoga 3 Pro is still more of your everyday laptop first, whereas the Surface is a tablet first. It really depends on which you want more. This being 13.3 inches, also you get a bigger screen. No kidding there. They're both running at very high resolutions. I, really 1080p would be fine on these screen sizes. They both exceed that by quite a bit. So you're talking about extreme sharpness on each, very good color saturation. In fact, the gamut represented by each of these is equal. The Yoga 3 Pro is 300 nits of brightness versus 340 for the Surface Pro 3. So it gets a little bit brighter. But one nice thing about that is you get a bigger desktop too so when you're using legacy programs. Of course, you're going to have to use scaling, so we have this set to 200% scaling just to manage the DPI on it, but it's still pretty usable. So it also depends on what size display you want. Our Surface Pro 3 has a 12.1 inch display. So for those of you who are used to larger laptops, it might seem a little cramped. It's way better than the Surface Pro 2 with its 10 inch class display here. I find it just fine, and Microsoft does a good job with this with optimizing it. It's pretty sharp. It's pretty nice. It's not too bad, but still 13.3 inch for a lot of people is the smallest they want to go. So keep it in mind. Where the Surface Pro 3 fights back is with its digital pen. And that's what's in our little keyboard holder right here. Entry technology, active pen. That means palm rejection. It means a very precise tip. You can use a capacitive stylus with the Yoga Pro 3. Not the same experience. If you've used those on an iPad or an Android tablet, you know, big fat tips, imprecise, there's no palm rejection. It's kind of a miserable experience, especially on a bigger screen where it's just about impossible to not rest your hand on the screen. So for those of you who want the pen for art or for note taking, the Surface Pro 3 makes more sense. Also, its smaller size starts to make more sense because it's easier to handle. It's nominally lighter, 1.76 pounds for the tablet alone, but once you add in the keyboard, you bring the weight up closer to our Yoga 3 Pro, which weighs 2.6 pounds. It went on a big diet from the Yoga 2 Pro, thanks to smaller battery inside and a more power frugal CPU, also very skinny. So either way, you're looking at actually a surprisingly slim, slim product. The Yoga 3 Pro being also a conventional laptop, thanks to a 360 degree hinge, there it is. You can do that. You can put it in presentation mode. You can put it in tent mode. If you're looking for something that also works primarily as a laptop with those kind of ergonomics, then you've got it right here. Another benefit is the ports. See, there's room for more ports here. So like many Ultrabooks, we've got USB port right there, 3.0 headphone jack. Those are our volume controls, power controls. And on this side right here, USB port. This 
3.0 port. This one here is a combo port. This one can be used for charging or it can be a USB 2.0 port. So three USB ports total, micro HDMI, and a full-size SD card slot. The card does stick out of the slot about halfway, but still that's, you know, similar to a lot of other Ultrabooks and it's quite a feat for something this skinny and light. Surface Pro 3, on the other hand, is port constrained, like a lot of tablet-first devices. Volume control, headphone jack, power up there, magnetic charging connector, one USB 3.0 port and a mini display port. So if you're a USB happy kind of person, then you're probably going to need a either use the dock with this guy or just get yourself a USB hub. There is a micro SD card slot under the clever stand as well, right inside of there. So that's how this one is kind of versatile. It has the infinite position kickstand, so you can prop this up in a variety of positions. Obviously, there's no point to yogaing with this because there is no connected keyboard on it. Now, in terms of portability size-wise, obviously the Surface Pro 3 is going to have the smaller footprint. If you need to fit it into smaller bags, those really teeny hotel safes, that sort of thing, this guy can go just about anywhere with you. This is, it may be thin and light, but it's still got the footprint of your standard Ultrabook. Now, in terms of performance, here's where you're going to be surprised that the Surface Pro 3 actually pulls ahead. This has your Haswell Intel 4th generation, Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 CPU options. The, the mainstream model, the first one that was available, was the Intel Core i5 clocked at 1.9 gigahertz with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD drive. Both of these have dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11, AC, and Bluetooth, by the way. Now, the Lenovo is a different character right here. To get it so thin, and because Lenovo wanted to be one of the first with the fifth generation Intel Broadwell CPUs, this has a Broadwell Y series CPU, which is sort of like the Y series CPUs used in some tablets that are got less horsepower than the Surface Pro 3. Good news about Broadwell is it actually gets a lot of performance out of that Y-series CPU and it uses less battery power so they can put a smaller battery, but this still benchmarks a little bit under our Core i5 Surface Pro 3. So for those of you who need the most CPU, um, you're still going to get out of Surface Pro 3. Surface Pro 3 has more CPU options too with that Core i3, i5, i7, obviously you can go up to 512 gig SSD. The Lenovo right now comes with the one Broadwell Y-Series CPU option, only the 5Y70 clocked at 1.1 gigahertz, but with Turbo Boost to 2.7, so a Turbo Boost it can put out some lump. All models have 8 gigs of RAM soldered on board on this guy. Now, you can open this up. There are screws on the bottom. There's not a lot to upgrade on this, but you can actually take out the wireless card, and that's pretty typical of all Ultrabooks, and it has an M2 SSD drive. It's one of those gumstick-shaped ones. So should you ever want to upgrade the SSD in the future yourself, you can. Surface Pro 3 is about impossible to open. I open up everything. This is not something you want to open up, get involved in things like trying to suction cup the display off. So, buy what you need when it comes to this one and if upgradability is important while the Yoga 3 Pro is not wildly impressive in terms of upgradability at least you can open up and get the some things. Not so with this. You're going to send this in for service if you need to do that. Now in terms of pricing because this Service Pro 3 is available in different configurations of those CPUs, the i3 starts at $799, and that's with a paltry 64 gig SSD. Not really enough for Windows 8.1. The Core i5, the mainstream one with the 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD, is $999. Aha, but don't forget to factor in the $130 keyboard I'm sure most of you are going to want with this. And then the i7 depends on what size SSD you get with this. You can go up to an i5 with a 256 gig SSD for $12.99, which happens to be the same price as the 256 gig Lenovo. And if you want to go up to the 512 with this one and an i7, you can go to almost $2,000 with the Surface Pro 3. For best buy price is $1,500. So you can get still the same Intel Broadwell CPU, but you can go up to 512 gig SSD for $1,500. So this price is higher, but that's about what it's going for. This guy with the Core i5 and 512, you get around the same price a little bit more if Microsoft were to offer the 512 with the i5. Huh. So anyway, you're looking, in terms of storage capacity, they would be about the same price, at $1299 if you wanted the 256 gig. However, this one's a bit more versatile in offering more configurations and therefore more price options too. So if you're on a tight budget, the $1299 for the Yoga 3 Pro entry-level price might be a little tight for you, but you can get the 999 
Surface Pro 3 and still get a very solid spec machine. Now between two very similar, say, Ultrabook kind of models, we could declare a winner here. Honestly, in this case, the, the design and the use cases are so different, there is not a clear winner. Do you want a tablet first? Do you want something that's really small, very portable? Adding the keyboard on doesn't really increase the size much at all. We got the magnetic keyboard right there. It just goes right on, very easy. Very light. Or do you want something that has more of true laptop ergonomics? That would be your Lenovo 3 Pro. Do you need the pen? Aha, uh -huh, the pen right here, that Surface Pro 3 is the one that's going to be the one for you then. Do you need as much horsepower as possible? Right now the Surface Pro 3 has got a little bit more horsepower here. Do you need ports? No. Go back to this more conventional laptop design that does allow for more ports. So hopefully now you can see which one's going to fit your needs most. Tablet first with the pen design right there, something that fits anywhere for super light compact travel, or something that really can stand in for your average 13-inch laptop slash ultrabook.